If you're a landlord and your tenant has not paid rent, step number one, three-day notice to pay rent or vacate. That's in writing. But it's that three-day notice is literally saying, hey, if you come and pay me, if tenant, you come pay me all the rent you owe me within three days, hey, there's nothing I can do. i got to take your rent, and you're going to continue to be a tenant here. That's right. It's a safe port that our legislature has put into place to give the tenant an opportunity to get caught up to have no legal effect relative to an eviction process, and it's a requirement. So a lot of landlords don't understand that that is a preliminary step before they can ever think about doing an eviction. They have to do a th- proper three-day notice, which actually turns out to be pretty complicated. It looks so simple. It's you know one paragraph long. It's written for you, basically, and yet this raises the issue of, where, how do you find out what Florida law is on something like a three-day notice? And you go, well, look, look in the statute. That makes some sense. But that's not all there is to it. There's a combination of that and decided cases of Florida law and things that are in your lease impact on it. So we have a three-way coming together, three-way intersection of things that can influence a three-day notice. I can tell you when landlords come in and they tell me, oh, I've started the eviction process. Here's my three-day notice that I served on them. I say, let me see the notice, first of all, because almost always, 90% of the time, those notices are invalid. The case cannot proceed on an invalid three-day notice. So if they made a mistake, they're going to get kicked out of court. Yeah. But here's a question for you. Yeah. If you have a lease that provides for a late charge, if the tenant is, say, for example, three days late, okay, the late charge, and so now day number four, the tenant, the landlord's ready to put up this three-day notice to pay right. rent or vacate. Can the landlord put on there, in addition to the rent amount, can the landlord put the late charge amount on that three-day notice? Right. Well, what a good question, because that is typically issue and error number one which is you cannot do that. And that is almost always, if there's going to be a mistake, that is the one that landlords typically make. They go, well, the rent is 1000 and we agree that if you were late, it would be uh, you know, $150. So now it's $1,150. They put that in the three-day notice. That is a no-go. That means your three-day notice by rulings of multiple courts over many years that invalidates the three-day notice. Now, two years ago, That would mean you would be kicked out of court. The case would be dismissed. You'd have to start over again. And heaven forbid, you might even have to pay the attorney fees of the of the tenant who hired an attorney to make that case. Two years ago, our legislature got into the fray here and said, we're going to change that. These mistakes still invalidate the notice, but we're going to give you an opportunity to fix the notice. You won't get kicked out of court. We don't tell you exactly how we're going to let you fix it, but in theory, you could refile that notice, still have a legal case pending, and start all over within the confines of your legal case without getting your case dismissed. You don't want to do that. You want to get it right the first time because you want to proceed. You're a landlord. You are ready to go. You want to keep this going. I often tell landlords at my workshop, your job as a landlord is to push, 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 and you can expect your tenant— to delay, delay, delay. That's kind of the roles that people are in. I'm not saying bad things about either of them. That's the role they find themselves in. So landlords need to get it right and keep moving forward. So I'm curious then about uh, these late charges that, you know, it, let's say the over the course of the lease, the tenant has been late many times. The landlord has done many three-day notices, but he's, the landlord's never managed to get his late charge. At the very end of the lease, can the landlord take all these late charges out of the tenant security deposit? Well, so landlords will try to do that, but then we run into another complicated area of landlord-tenant law, which is the area of waivers. So if a landlord allows things to happen and then accepts rent after he allows things to happen, there's a case to be made that he has waived that violation of the terms of the lease. And so you start to get into situations where the landlord for months and months and months continued to collect rent and didn't pursue getting this, the the late charges, and many courts hold that those have now been waived. All right. Hey, folks, my name is Tom Olson. The name of the show is Olson on Law every Sunday morning at, at 9 right here on ESPN Orlando. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. 